Hi, this is Ed. I hope you all are having a good day today. Today I'm going to be uh, doing a study in the first chapter of James. And uh, the Lord has been leading me in Bible study lately in the book of James, as, as well as some other books as well. But I spent a good bit of time reading through James, and I felt the Lord wanted me to, to do some teaching on this very important book in the Scripture. And uh, I'm going to be reading today from the uh, New King James Version, and then I'm going to share some comments that I have with you all on this uh, wonderful passage of Scripture. So let's get started. James, a bondservant of God and of the Lord Jesus Christ, to the twelve tribes which are scattered abroad, greetings, my brethren. Count it all joy when you fall into various trials, knowing that the testing of your faith pr produces patience. But let patience have its perfect work, that you may be perfect and complete, lacking nothing. If any of you lacks wisdom, let him ask of God, who gives to all liberally and without reproach, and it will be given to him. But let him ask in faith with no doubting, for he who doubts is like a wave of the sea, driven and tossed by the wind. For let not that man suppose that he will receive anything from the Lord. He is a double-minded man, unstable in all his ways. Let the lowly brother glory in his exaltation, but the rich in his humiliation. Because as a flower of the field, he will pass away. For no sooner has the sun risen with a burning heat than it withers the grass. Its flower falls and its beautiful appearance perishes. So the rich man also will fade away in his pursuits. Blessed is the man who endures temptation, for when he has been approved, he will receive the crown of life, which the Lord has promised to those who love him. Let no one say when he is tempted, I am tempted by God, for God cannot be tempted by evil, nor does he himself tempt anyone. But each one is tempted when he is drawn away by his own desires and enticed. Then when desire has conceived, it gives birth to sin, and sin, when it is full grown, brings forth death. Do not be deceived, my beloved brethren. Every good gift and every perfect gift is from above, and comes down from the Father of lights, with whom there is no variation or shadow of turning. Of his own will he brought us forth by the word of truth, that we might be a kind of first fruits of his creatures, so then, my beloved brethren, let every man be swift to hear, slow to speak, and slow to wrath. For the wrath of man does not produce the righteousness of God. Therefore, lay aside all filthiness and overflow of wickedness, and receive with meekness the implanted word which is able to save your souls. But be ye doers of the word, not hearers only, deceiving yourselves. For if any one is a hearer of the word and is not a doer, he is like a man observing his natural face in a mirror. For he observes himself, goes away, and immediately forgets what kind of man he was. But he who looks into the perfect law of liberty and continues in it, and is not forgetful hearer but a doer of the work, this one will be blessed in what he does. If any one among you thinks he is religious and does not bridle his tongue, but deceives his own heart, this one's religion is useless. Pure and undefiled religion before God and the Father is this, to visit orphans and widows in their trouble, and to keep oneself unspotted from the world. What a powerful passage of scripture here in the book of James. And uh, James is, is a very interesting and also misunderstood in some ways, uh, some, some, particularly this first part, into who it was written to. I'm going to give you a brief introduction here and then uh, share some comments. Some have called the book of James the New Testament book of Proverbs, and rightfully so, as it contains much wisdom. The main theme of the book is that true faith results in outward acts of obedience and righteousness. James was the oldest half-brother of Jesus, and he led, was a leader of believers in Jerusalem. This book is a must-read for all who desire to follow Christ. James was written to a Jewish audience, and 
many people do not even know this, even though it says it's written to the 12 tribes scattered abroad. The trials we face should not cause sorrow or alarm, for we are more than conquerors through Christ and can do all things through him who strengthens us. Being patient during trials helps us to endure adverse circumstances without letting them overcome us. God freely gives wisdom to the humble, but he resists the proud. We must believe in God's promises and his holy word. For those who doubt will usually not receive answers to their prayers. We are to rejoice in the Lord and his salvation, knowing that we are strangers on this earth. And all true believers in Christ will have at last eternal peace and joy. Blessed are those who endure trials and are overcomers, for they shall receive the crown of life. We are tempted by our own lust of the flesh, but through the Holy Spirit we can overcome. For when we walk in the Spirit, we shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. We are to be swift to hear, slow to speak, and slow to anger. We are to lay aside all filthiness of the flesh and be sanctified through God's word and through regeneration by the Holy Spirit. Let us be doers of the word. If we do not obey the scriptures, then we deceive ourselves by thinking we only have to hear God's word and not act upon it. Those who are doers of the word are blessed. Let the Holy Spirit govern your speech, and again, be slow to speak. Think before you speak rashly. We are to remember all orphans and widows in our prayers and also help them when we are able to do so. Lastly, we are to focus on Christ and his kingdom instead of the things of the world and avoid being trapped by the deceit of worldly riches and entertainment. This passage teaches us much here. And again, the main teaching is that we are to be do doers of the word and not just hearers only. Let us not be found to be hypocrites when the Lord returns for his own. For hypocrites will not go with the Lord when he comes for his bride. They will be left to endure the tribulation. So let us, again, be doers of the word. Let us finish our calling. Let us continue to reach out to the lost, for there are many that are yet unsaved. And the Lord wishes that all would come to repentance. But he, know, he knows not all will, but that is his wish. And I believe that's one of the reasons the Lord hasn't come yet for his bride, is because he's waiting for more to come to the ark of salvation. So God bless you all. Hope this message has encouraged you and blessed you today. Uh, if you've enjoyed this message, please share it with others. And until next time, keep looking up.